important thing. You should be thorough with this diagnosis. Diagnosis is mainly by history, physical examination, imaging techniques and uh, direct laryngoscopy and biopsy is the gold standard in the diagnosis of a CA larynx. First, history and physical examination. Again, we can divide that into supraglottis, glottis and subglottis, right? So, of the supraglottis, the supraglottis uh, produces very little or no symptoms in the earlier stages. And if at all the patient complaint, it will be pain. There will be a vague symptom like pain uh, in the throat or there will be patient will complain of difficulty in swallowing or there will be a foreign body sensation of the throat. Usually this is treated as GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease or a laryngeal, uh, laryngeal reflux disease. And uh, uh, there is chance of missing that. And then there will be otalgia. What is that? It's a referred otalgia. I already uh, um, described uh, referred otalgia. And uh, in that class I told you that the supraglottis CA, the first presentation of the supraglottis CA is uh, referred otalgia. So each case of referred otalgia should be investigated in detail. Voice change. What is that uh, typically called? It is a hot potato voice. Okay. So uh, these are the uh, initial, uh, the earlier complaint and in later stages there will be, what are things, there will be hemoptysis, okay. Because I already told you that this uh, supra-hired epiglottis usually produces an exophytic or um, proliferative lesions and that can cause hemoptysis, then aspiration. can go to, if it is spilling over to the uh, pyricum fossa, it can go for a severe dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing or painful swallowing and later uh, difficulty in breathing and also it can go for stridor. And one more thing, and along with the spread I told you, the lymphatic supply of supraglottis is, the, is very abundant, so this can also present as neck node. Sometimes the patient present only with the neck node with no other complaints. Okay. So all this uh, should be investigated in detail. For a supraglottis, these are the earlier features and late stages you will get all this. And what about the glottic malignancy? So a CA, uh, CA glottis will produce very early symptoms because a minute change or minute uh, change in the wave pattern of the vocal cords due to a minimum lesion will cause a change in voice, hoarseness of voice. Okay. So that is the earliest symptom and it is the easiest one and of the three, the best prognosis is with the CA glottis. Okay, so for glottis, it is hoarseness. Right? So the uh, dictum is that any hoarseness persisting for more than three weeks should be investigated for CA larynx. Okay, if hoarseness for more than Three weeks, and also in an uh, elderly male patient with a history of chronic smoking and alcoholism, even if it is not three weeks, the, that patient, if uh, presenting with a hoarseness, should be investigated in detail. Okay, that you have to remember. So, glottis CA, the earlier symptom is hoarseness, so it will be easy to pick up. And in late stages, again, this will go to hemoptysis, aspiration, dysphagia, strider and no neck node. Neck node is the rarest thing that can happen with a CA glottis. This uh, subglottis uh, lesions, like similar to that of supraglottis, it produces very vague symptoms in the early stages. Uh, similar to this, it will also produce a foreign body sensation is the commonest presentation in the um, early stages, vague symptom. But in an advanced cases, the uh, most important symptom in an advanced lesion is uh, rapidly reduced maximum phonation time and also very rapid uh, vocal fatigue. Okay, maximum phonation time will be reduced and also there will be a rapid vocal fatigue and later it will go for a stride. Okay, so these are the history or presenting complaints of the patient. You should go for a thorough physical examination keeping all these in mind. In examination, 
the indirect laryngoscopy examination is the most important one. Even in this era of endoscopy, you should not neglect the importance of this indirect laryngoscopy. Like you do a uh, tuniform test in ear, for all cases of uh, larynx, you have to go with an indirect laryngoscopy examination and also while doing that, you should, especially you should look for the vocal cord mobility, vocal cord uh, fixity, the location of the arytenoid and the status of mucosa. That is very important. And so, internal laryngoscopy is very, very important. Okay. And the next one is Hopkins Road examination. You can use uh, endoscopies, Hopkins Road telescopes, be it a flexible one or a rigid one. Okay. Endoscopy. <coughs> and uh, also examination of neck is very important. The neck examination and indirect laryngoscopy are the most important uh, one in the physical examination of a patient with the CA larynx. Okay. And the next diagnostic modality is imaging techniques. What are the so history, examination and imaging? Of the imaging, uh, CT, MRA or PET scan can be used and remember this uh, imagiology, imaging techniques cannot replace your clinical examination or clinical findings and judgment. That is very important. And the uh, CT is usually taken in an axial plane, so you can get a lateral as well as anthroposterior dimensions of the lesion and the preepiglottic, paraepiglottic uh, space involvement, preepiglottic space, paraglottic uh, space, and also subglottic extension is better seen with CT scan. But in MRA is superior to, usually they are complementary, but MRA in a uh, multiplanar uh, cut is superior to CT in the sense of uh, locating the cartilage invasion or cartilage erosion. Okay, so MRA is mainly for cartilage erosion. And what is the role of this PET scan? Uh, in a residual or a recurrent case, recurrent lesions, the diagnosis will be difficult because of edema. Whether it is due to uh, recurrence or residualization or due to radiotherapy will be difficult because there will be severe mucositis also. And if you go for a biopsy, it can lead to chondritis, perichondritis. So, in that cases, the PET scan will give you a correct idea on whether the presence of residual or recurrent lesion is there or not. Okay, that is the importance of PET scan. Right? And uh, along with this, another one is stroboscopy and voice assessment. Also, they are the main other main tools for assessment of uh, laryngeal lesions and the stroboscopy is mainly useful or it's a main tool for benign uh, vocal cord lesions and also for voice disorders and in invasive uh, carcinomas of the larynx the stroboscope has no role but the wave pattern or the, the um, additions between the mucosa of the vocal fold and the vocal ligament can, can be found out early which is characteristic of a micro-invasive carcinoma. So in a micro-invasive carcinoma, if you are going for a stroboscopy, uh, you can find out the additions between the mucosa of vocal fold and also the vocal ligament. Okay, but it is of no use in case of an invasive carcinoma. And in examination, this direct laryngoscopy and biopsy under general anesthesia is very important. That is the gold standard in the diagnosis of CA larynx. Which one? That is the direct laryngoscopy and biopsy under general anesthesia. That is the gold standard in the diagnosis of CA larynx. The advantages of doing a direct laryngoscopy under general anesthesia are number one, the blind areas of indirect laryngoscopy can be examined thoroughly. Okay, that is number one. There are five blind areas in indirect laryngoscopy which can be examined thoroughly by using a direct laryngoscopy under general anesthesia. And number two, the fixity of uh, vocal cord should be differentiated from uh, fixity of arytenoid. So the cricoarytenoid joint has to be probed using a laryngeal probe and also with a laryngeal probe we have to examine the inside of the ventricle. That is also important. Okay. Inside of the ventricle has to be probed. That is why direct laryngoscopy has to be done under general anesthesia and if there are small lesions uh, rather than a punch biopsy we can go for an excision biopsy for small lesions uh, using a micro 
uh, or laryngeal microscope. So microlaryngoscopy and uh, uh, excision biopsy with the uh, adequate uh, free margin has to be taken out. So these are the um, uh, diagnostic modality. One is history and uh, physical examination, especially using an indirect laryngoscopy. The Hopkins Road endoscopes, examination of neck and also dioscopy biopsy under general anesthesia and stroboscopy and uh, um, assessment of voice. And in imaging comes mainly the CT scan, MRI and also in case of recurrence or uh, uh, residual lesions, the positron emission tomogram scan is also useful.